This is a demonstration of how to do reaction stoichiometry. So, um, reaction stoichiometry is a math relationship between chemicals in a chemical reaction. So what this means is we're using mole facts with balanced chemical equations and we're sticking the two together. Every reaction stoichiometry has three steps. They go like this, get to moles. I call that moles is the goal step. Then you do a mole ratio, stack your moles using the coefficients from a balanced chemical equation, and then get to the unit in the problem. For your first step, get to moles. You want to use the mole facts that we've already learned. Either use one mole equals the molar mass in grams. Uh, you need to use your periodic table to figure that out. Or one mole equals 22.4 liters of gas at STP, which we won't have to worry about. And when we talk about gas, we mean gas as a phase of matter, like carbon dioxide gas or oxygen gas. Lastly, uh, you could also think of this as mole hill, which is what we often use in our class. Your next step is to um, do the mole ratio step, which is going to be to stack your moles. And here's an example where we have a balanced chemical equation, so you have to start with that. It's a 1, 3, 2 set of coefficients. So a nitrogen-hydrogen ratio is a 1 to 3 ratio. Or likewise, a hydrogen-ammonia ratio is a 1 to 2 ratio. We can take that ratio, for example, the hydrogen to ammonia, and write it as a 2 to 3 ratio, so 2 over 3 or 3 over 2. Finally, we're going to use mole facts to get to the unit in our problems. Uh, just like in step number one, we're going to use one mole equals the molar mass in grams, or one mole equals 22.4 liters, which are also found in our mole hill. I have some example problems that can show us how to do these steps in order to solve a stoichiometry problem. A student decomposes 61.25 grams potassium chlorate. Here's my potassium chlorate. And how many grams of oxygen form as a result of this decomposition? You're going to notice that I'm starting out with a balanced chemical equation, which is a must in order to do a stoichiometry problem. I'm going to switch over to my webcam. And what we're going to do underneath the balanced equation is we're going to add the information that's provided. So the problem tells me 61.25 grams of potassium chlorate. I'd like to solve for grams of oxygen. I'd like to see that on all of our balanced chemical equations so I know that you can identify the correct substances. Then we're going to start out with a grid just like we did when we did uh, factor label problems in the past. Always start with what you know. So what we know is 61.25 grams, that's going to go in my top left box. And then I need to get rid of grams because my first step is to get to moles. So the first fraction is going to be to get to moles. Since I have grams, I want to use the one mole equals the molar mass in grams. So off my periodic table, I need to go from grams of KClO3 up to moles of KClO3. Notice it's one mole. It's always going to be one mole whenever we stack moles with grams. And then I'm going to use my periodic table to look up these numbers. 39.1, chlorine is 35.45, oxygen is 16, but we have three copies. And that gives me a total of 122.55. That allows grams to cross off. So I accomplish step one, get to moles. Moles is the goals, I'm now in moles. Because I'm in moles of KClO3, now I can compare moles of KClO3 to moles of O2 using my coefficients. This is my mole ratio step. Stack your moles. Since I don't want to know moles of KClO3 in my final answer, I'm going to put them on the bottom so they can effectively cross off. I'm going to put the chemical that I want to know about in um, my top of my fraction. And then I'm going to look at moles of KClO3. The number in front of KClO3 is 2. This is the one and only spot I'm going to care about coefficients. The moles of oxygen is 3. Moles of KCl3 cross off. I now have the correct chemical. I'm just in the wrong unit. So my third step is to get to my unit in my problem, which is grams. And again, I'm going to need to use a, a mole fact to do that. One mole is equal to the molar mass in grams. Since I don't want moles in my final answer, I need them to cross off. And it's the number 1 in front of moles. Whenever I stack moles with grams, it's always going to be um, the number 1. 
then I need to use my periodic table to find out how heavy oxygen is. It's molar mass. Oxygen weighs 16. There's two copies giving me a mass of 32. Moles will cross off. I plug this all into my calculator, multiplying my numerators, dividing my, by my denominators, and I end up with a number that sounds like um, 23.99, and that is rounded value to uh, four sig figs, which I'm getting right here. The unit of my problem, also a substance are required. So this time around, we must have a unit and an idea of our chemical because we're talking about two chemicals in these problems. That's a mass to mass problem. We can try a different kind of problem where we're going from a mass to a volume of gas. I'm going to again ID my number that's given to me, barium carbonate. I'm going to write that underneath the appropriate substance. It says how many liters of CO2, so question mark CO2. So I'll be taking <coughs> my number that's provided and I'll write that underneath my balanced chemical equation. 45.0 grams of barium carbonate. How many liters is this? So this is a mass to volume problem. I'm starting with a mass, finishing with a volume. Same set of steps, get to moles. You can do that by starting with what you know. To get from grams to moles, I'm using mole hill. One mole is equal to the molar mass in grams. To do that, I need to find out how heavy calcium carbonate happens to be using my periodic table. Calcium weighs 4008. Carbon weighs 1201. Oxygen weighs 16, and there's three copies. Adding that all together, I see that barium carbonate weighs 197.34. That effectively takes care of my first step, which is to get to moles. Step two, stack your moles, mole ratio. And you use your balanced chemical equation to establish a mole ratio. Get rid of the substance you begin with, moles of calcium carbonate. Oops, barium carbonate, I'm sorry. Made a mistake here. This number's correct, though, because I did do this work prior to. I just made an uh, error when I was um, bringing formulas down. So here I have one mole of barium carbonate. And that's equal to one mole of CO2. So this is the one spot that I care about my coefficients. I'm never going to use the coefficients in the rest of the problem besides when I'm stacking them when I have moles over moles. Finally, I need to get from one mole of CO2 up to liters of CO2. To do that, I'm using a mole fact, and that's one mole equals 22.4 liters of gas. So the number in front of liters is 22.4. Anytime I have moles stacked with something that's not moles, moles with liters, it's always going to be one mole. And if I do my math by multiplying all my tops and dividing by my bottoms, I'm going to end up with 5.11 liters of CO2 gas. You can box that answer so you can find it later. You can also do a problem that has um, a mass to a volume. If 11 point, or excuse me, a volume to a mass. If 11.2 liters of oxygen, so I'm going to write 11.2 underneath my oxygen. I'm going to solve for grams of aluminum oxide. So how many grams of aluminum oxide? Same thing as we've been doing here. I have 11.2 liters of oxygen. I want to know how many grams of aluminum oxide. Always start with what you know. Taking our 11.2 liters of O2. We're trying to go from liters to moles. Step one, get to moles. Moles is the goals. Here I have moles stacked with liters, so the number is going to be one, and then my number is 22.4, because one mole equals 22.4 liters of gas. Liters crosses off. I'm going to stack my moles. So here's the only spot that I care about coefficients. I don't want to know about O2 any longer because I want to know about the aluminum oxide. So I'm going to have three moles of O2 on the bottom, so I can cross those out, and I'm converting that to one mole of the, there should be a two right here, of the, excuse me, two moles of the aluminum oxide. So using my balanced chemical equation, my balancing numbers, my coefficients, I can establish my mole ratio. I'm now in the correct chemical, but I have the wrong unit. So my, my last step, step number three, is to get to my unit, my problem. So one mole of aluminum oxide 
it's going to cross off by putting an opposite. And I'm trying to convert to grams of aluminum oxide. So here I'm using one mole is equal to the molar mass in grams. Aluminum weighs 26.98, and there's two copies. Oxygen weighs 16, and there's three copies. Altogether, that weighs 101.96. And I already added that together, um, grabbing these numbers off my periodic table. If I do all of my math for this problem, I'm going to get an answer that's rounded to three sig figs, that's 34 0.0 grams of aluminum oxide. You can box my answer so I can find it later. The last problem I'd like to show is just going from a volume to a volume. These are the easiest problems because we're going to use the same number 22.4 twice and we don't have to look anything up on our periodic table. So I know 12 liters of H2. I'm going to put that underneath my H2. How many liters of ammonia gas? Here's my question mark. Question mark liters. So flipping back to my webcam, I know that I have um, 12 liters of H2, and I'm trying to solve for uh, a number of ammonia, a number of liters of ammonia. Always start with what you know. Moles is the goals. Stack your moles. Get to the unit in the problem. So I'm taking my 12 liters of H2 gas, and I'm getting rid of liters because I want to get to moles. Step one is to get to moles. Anytime I have moles stacked with something that's not moles, moles with liters, it's going to be one mole for 22.4 liters. Liters can cross off. Now that I'm in moles, I can compare moles to moles. Moles of one substance to moles of the other. We don't want H2 because the problem asks about the ammonia gas. I'm going to use my mole ratio for my balancing numbers, my coefficients. There are two moles of ammonia there's three moles of H2. I can take my one mole of ammonia then and convert that to the units of my problem, which happen to be liters. Question mark liters. The number in front of liters on mole hill or mole fax is 22.4, as long as we're running at standard temperature and pressure. At this point, I can just go ahead and calculate all my numbers, and I can end up with a number of 8.00 liters of the ammonia to three sig figs, and the three sig figs come from the initial 12.0, which is actually listed in the text of the problem. All these problems that we did today worked on three steps. To summarize, step one, get to moles. Step two, do a mole ratio using the balanced chemical equation and the balancing numbers of your balanced chemical equation. Number three, get to the unit in the problem. And that's how we do all reaction stoichiometry problems is with those three steps.